Hi Sadhguru, uh, I am Dheeraj, so… I, the microphone, you must hold it like Lady Gaga, like this <laughs> Hello, so my question is, we live in the times when uh, artificial intelligence is poised to surpass human intelligence uh, and even fr people from the scientific community, they stand divided on this front mm -hmm. that whether it will be proven as a threat or just an enhancement. As you spoke, even Elon Musk is skeptical about that. So, what are your views upon it? Like, where do you stand? See, do you remember when they installed uh, lifting cranes and gantries in the ports of Bengal? The trade unions all protested, they're going to take away our jobs. Do you remember those times? There, that was a time where thousands of men would carry sacks out of a ship. One ship unloading means fifteen days, twenty-five days like this. Though they were, at that time the ships were much smaller, sacks, one one man carrying one one sack and all kinds of problems with it. Today, I was recently visiting one of the largest ports in the world in India. You must find out which one it is. And they told me, at two… right there they were unloading this uh, uh, vessel, it is at two hundred and twenty-five thousand tons. I asked, how long does it take to unload? They said, we have the record in the world that we unload a ship like this within twenty-four to twenty-six hours. Because the cranes and the gantries are such, they will lift that kind of weights and just put it out, everything is in a container, it's just coming out. But when these containers and lifts… Uh, these cranes came, the labor unions across the country protested because our jobs are going to be taken. I'm sure now they're all happy they don't have to carry those bags. Similarly, if artificial intelligence comes, I'll tell you my experience of artificial intelligence. I was uh, probably twelve, thirteen years of age, thirteen I think. It's not like you people, all of you have smartphones and stuff, those days. Somebody shows me a flatbed calculator. Those days, only two companies making these calculators, at least in India, what was available, Sony and Panasonic. For this also to get it, you need Haji Mastan. He has to smuggle it in, otherwise you won't get it <laughs> By normal means, you can't get it <laughs> So, Sony was very expensive, hundred and twenty-five rupees. Panasonic, if you went and bargained in that so-called Hong Kong bazaar or Burma bazaar or whatever, you would get it for ninety rupees. So you buy this calculator and somebody brought it first time I am seeing. They do tuk 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 into tuk 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 tuk. <laughs> I said, what? Why the hell are they torturing me in the mathematics classes? <laughs> when this stupid machine, ninety rupee machine can do this, why are they torturing me for ten, twelve years, teaching me how to add, how to multiply <laughs> So that day I sat and dreamt, if there was another machine like this for science, for chemistry, for physics, for everything, I don't have to come to school. That was my dream. It's going to come true shortly. <laughs> See, it helps. It did not come true when I was going to school, but it's going to come true very shortly. Don't you find this Google lady, though you are in IIT, this Google lady seems to know more than you any given day? Hello? So it will come what you are going to learn in twenty-five years of education is in this much gadget. Today there are phones with six hundred GB of memory. You are not a match for that, isn't it? So this is the problem with our education systems. This is, an ir this is a terrible European influence on us that we have been made to believe, most human beings are believing that memory is intelligence. Memory is not intelligence. 
memory is just information. If you misunderstand information as intelligence, then we will… whole generations have paid a price for this, except a few human beings who spark in a big way in every generation till now, rest are all a big drag. I'm telling you, in every human being there is a genius. The question is, they must find the right habitat, right atmosphere for that genius to blossom. But right now if you go on imposing loads and loads of memory on their heads, their genius will never spark because they misunderstand memory as intelligence because if you have some information that the guy next to you doesn't have and you just speak it out, he thinks he's a fool and you think you are smart. This is the difference between a city boy and a village boy, you know? <laughs> a city boy is looking smart not because he's more intelligent, simply because he has more information in his head. So these people who have been faking intelligence for a long time, they are all going to become redundant once artificial intelligence comes because a stupid little machine is going to have more memory than you can ever imagine possible, all right? This… these are good times because what you remember in your mind will not decide who you are in the society. How much of a human being are you is going to determine who you are. I think fantastic times. I think fantastic times for humanity is just about coming. I'm asking you, I'm asking you, suppose you were working in one of the ports in Bengal and you were carrying those bags, heavy bags, back-breaking loads and after hundred years you came back and saw all these loads are just being put, put, lifted and put on the truck just like that in two minutes, what you carried entire day, would you not be fascinated and fantastic? That's how you will feel if after the artificial intelligence has come, you come and you realize you don't have to go to school, you don't have to gather all this nonsense. All these idiots who read two books and acting very smart in the world, they will all go. You have to exercise your intelligence, otherwise you will not survive. It's great time <laughs>